Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you do, do not point the camera that way. All right, <laughs> we're making progress in the studio. I am your host, Chingo Bling, aka the Pack Rat, aka uh, Hoarders, episode five, season ten. Uh, we <laughs> have episode five, season ten. That's how you do it, baby, on Hoarders. <laughs> All right, uh, season premiere. No, I'm just talking shit now. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everyone? This is Red Pill Tamales, the fastest growing shit talking conspiracy theory biased agenda yeah I'm, that's what I'm a lot of kidding. people think nope that's exactly what people call it that's what a lot of people think you're right um, but don't worry y'all when we get to the uh the topics on the page right now about like gas shortage and stuff like that i'm gonna make sure that i uh what's the word man wiggle that headphone it's like oh, i get some weird fe- feedback i don't know what that is it's like do you, yeah do you hear that i just heard that too i don't you know, know what you think it is that you think it's that fridge? It's 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 that we have a lot of things hooked up, everybody, and there's only so much, you know. To I'm like, are we gonna have from? to do this intro over again? <laughs> no, nah, fuck it, no. Leave, it, leave it, leave it. Uh, Freedom of Speech tour. Uh, I'm headed to Corpus Christi, uh, May 20th through the 22nd. Ontario, California, July 14th. Oxnard, California, July 15th. We might add something after July 15th in Oxnard, but keep you posted. August 11th. That's my birthday month. Irvine, California. And then we hit Denver, Colorado, August 27th through the 29th uh, because they legalize shrooms and it is my birthday. We shall see. Brea, California, that's a reschedule, September 15th. And then we have Houston, September 23rd through the 26th. Addison, the DF Dub, October 7th through the 10th. San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. That is all I have for tour dates because we're trying to do more podcasting than touring these days. I'm trying to be like Tim Dillon. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Maybe, um, maybe we start adding more programming. Uh, this dude I follow, Hotep Jesus, he has a show like Monday. He streams Tuesday. He does something on Wednesday, different topic. Thursday, he has a Hot- a Hotep's Been Told You. Friday, he's doing like a chess thing. But um, I like it. I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I guess I got to holler at Rob. He's going to be like, motherfucker, you better go stream on your own. <laughs> I ain't got time to be over there. <laughs> No, if if we if that happened or if you did that, we would literally be looking at a blank screen, or people would l- be looking at a blank screen, and be like, "How do I? I can't get the audio." I, I oh yeah, if it were me, yeah, if it was just me trying to uh, broadcast, I noticed there's a bunch of random shit on that bar, but don't worry about that. <laughs> Yo, I just um, noticed that. I heard there uh, some Russians hacked, supposedly Russians, right? We don't know, uh, hacked a pipeline. You heard about that? No. Break? Yeah, man, this big gas pipeline. Uh, I forget what part of the country. But um, allegedly, there are gas shortages already happening, like in the Carolinas and Atlanta. And a lot of um, this is this is all you guys fact check me. But supposedly a lot of um, because this is breaking news, bro. This is all hearsay, right? Well, a lot of it's just happening. You know, it's developing right now. It's developing right now. And as we know, you know, sometimes, man, you might look at it one way, but depending on depending on how it's being reported, Mm -hmm. depending on the media outlet, you could take the same facts and present it differently. For example, uh, cop kills unarmed teenage black girl who is an honor roll student versus cop saves the life of a black girl who's about to get stabbed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Same shit. It's just different spin. But uh, supposedly, bro, uh, a lot of, I guess, even airlines are having to add stops on their routes so that they can fuel differently, I guess, gas and stuff. So basically, our our intelligence agencies are too busy worried about trying to catch these grandmas who were at January 6th instead of figuring out how they just hacked our whole gasoline infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, I don't know if this is what they mean by Build Back Better, uh. but, uh, but basically, man, the price of gas going up, and I, I posted this clip today on the What Did He Said, um, the What Did He Said page. It's a guy on uh, Twitter. His name is Malcolm Flex, but uh, I'm just going to play a little segment. Check it out. Boy, it sure is such a great day now that Orange Man is gone. I'm sure glad we don't have to worry about those mean tweets anymore. Oh, what's this? My gas tank is running empty? Let me just pull over on the side of the road and fill Uh, What happened? Oh, sorry. Tank up with that good old social media goodwill. Now that there are no more mean tweets, my car gets even more mileage. Oh, what's this? Gas stations are closed? Oh, crap. Guess I better go ahead and dig into my pocket and get $100,000 so that I can go buy a new electric car. Oh, wait. Inflation hit? That electric car is now $400,000? 
Oh, wait, now you can't even buy them because there are production shortages? Oh, well, at least Twitter's nice. No more orange man, no more mean tweets, hooray! What's this? The gas pipelines just got attacked? Cyber attack? Joe Biden doesn't know what the internet is? Joe Biden's asleep? Hmm. Well, at least no more orange man tweets! Yay! Yeah, man, so that's what's happening right now. That's literally what's happening right now. Does um, it feel more and more every day that like this simulation that we're in is getting, and I know I've said this before, but it is really getting almost unbelievable. Like you couldn't write this shit in a movie if you tried. Yeah, man. Like the stuff we've been talking about on here in terms of like uh, propaganda, um, you know, persuasion, finding a way to manipulate the masses by assigning them an opinion, right? Depending on uh, who you watch, your opinion is getting signed to you. So in this simulation, all this crazy shit is happening. How many folks that voted for Biden are realizing like, wait, we just had peace in the Middle East. And now you turn on the TV, ain't no more peace. Yeah. It's like gas was just $1.69 or whatever, right? Now look. Um, so somebody tweeted, somebody named uh, Noble Brown. They said, gas lines, inflation, chaos in the Middle East. It's Jimmy Carter all over again, and it took less than six months. <laughs> uh, Malcolm Flex says, remember when gas was $1.69 in places? The Keystone XL pipeline was in production. The border was secured. And we were seeing record amounts of peace accords in the Middle East with Israel among Arab nations. Do you remember? I Do you remember it now? We did it, Joe! We did it, Joe! We did it! <laughs> oh, that clip is like fucking nails on a chalkboard, we man. We did it, Joe! <laughs> Wait till that mass incarceration kick in. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Wait till they bring in all invariants from Brazil. And or you or gotta India, lock down right? again. Sepa la madre, win. Fuck, man. Yeah, man. So, what, what have you been? Uh, so, outside of that, has that is that what you found out today, or like that you've been kind of? Uh, I think it was like, like yesterday, I believe. I started hearing that. Um, I even saw Biden say um, that the servers or whatever the IP address of the people that hacked the pipeline. Um, I guess came out of Russia, uh -huh. but it's easy to be based out of China or anywhere. Sure. And I guess just move your VPN or I don't know how, but um, but yeah, man, our intelligence agencies need to get on it and 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 fuck over. Like, think about it, bro. If you hack America's petroleum infrastructure, ooh, ooh you you gonna be in big trouble. Yeah, like, especially you need, a lot you of people need to around be here. Yeah, no, I mean the per the people that did it. They need to have severe, severe consequences. I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was on Tripoli show or somebody was recently talking about how uh, Bill Gates had been talking, you know, the, the, the same amount of like, there's going to be a pandemic of like, you know, germ type uh -huh. status. There's also going to be this, this cyber pandemic that we should look out for in the near future or in the future in general. And it sounds, again, it sounds like sci-fi movie-ish, but after what we've been through the last year, that's like, no, that's definitely going to happen probably like sprinkles of it throughout the next dec couple of decades but you know the the thought of a huge scale cyber attack is absolutely <clears throat> yeah man i think i think they can do it um you know these hackers man i, I I'm, I'm not computer savvy like that so from the outside looking in i would argue that they're able to do it a lot more than they're doing it it's just that maybe there's like you know, what's going to happen to us if we, you know what I mean? Like, didn't they have, like, Anonymous and all these people back in the day where they were going around doing some shit like that? Yeah, you're right. They still kind of do, but, like, they really are in the background. Like, they're in the shadows. I haven't heard, that's the first time I've heard the name Anonymous in, like, I feel like two yeah. years. And then, like, the WikiLeaks, I don't know how they got a hold of, uh, you know, Hillary's emails and all this, right. you know. Um I mean, Hunter's laptop, that wasn't even a hack. That was just motherfucker left it at a repair shop. Did you hear the new one about Hunter? That he's writing another book? No, check this out. <clears throat> All right. So he had this 29-year-old uh, Chinese-American secretary assistant, right? And during his dad's presidential campaign, she, for one, for one, you could tell they were hooking up because they found these messages on the on the laptop. So it was like, hey, you left your... Um, she was wearing his little dog tags that he'd be wearing from the military. She's like, hey, you left him at my apartment last night. Da, 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 da. So 
you know it, while it, you were choking me with them <laughs> yeah so the the relationship i guess based on the the emails and the messages it went from you know some pretty professional like hey like here's your flight itinerary here's the hotel info like assistant type stuff to a little bit more chummy and long story short she was giving him like uh what's the word i guess mud on trump like kind of like it almost seemed like she was a spy and like the head spy person that that he was dealing with uh hunter he was dealing with all kind of shady people but basically the the uh, accusation is that he was not only sleeping with the spy but she was feeding him like info and and trying to like help out like hey what? tell your dad to say this type of shit yeah like your dad should probably take this approach or this would be a good tactic honey don't you think so pretty much you know people called us sellouts they called us sellouts every time we we'd hate on little hunter like déjalo he's hey he's he, pobrecito ta, he's on crack déjalo pobrecito ta malito <laughs> don't say nothing bad about hunter Good thing they blocked the New York Post because they were spreading Russian misinformation. Chingo, you pinche malinche vendido, sell out tío Tom. And it's like, what an hack. This little boy running around helping other countries, being globalists, uh, uh, selling out the American people. We we talk about it. All of a sudden, we're, we're KKK lovers with an agenda and, and uh, pinche racist Republicans or whatever the fuck people be thinking, right? Dude, that's so fucking crazy. It's like, we're just saying, the boy left a couple laptops, and this is the shit that was on there, and it looked like he belongs to China. It looks like they're all bought and paid for by China. But you know what? I didn't bring my tinfoil hat back here today. I forgot to make it. Damn, forgot. But I'm going to throw that motherfucker on so that uh, y'all can get more triggered. Yeah, I've seen a couple comments more and more that uh, fans are like, man, I'm not even into politics, but I can't help but listen to rpt and really binge, yeah and binge what we're talking about i'm like that's awesome like that i think that's great and, and we've said it before our goal is to empower you by informing you we don't want to tell you how to think or what to vote how to vote or nothing like that we want y'all to be more confident here look, look at the trump hands <laughs> here go to DeSantis' hands here we go we want you to be more confident when people are having a political discussion for you to feel like no, I'm good. I, I I understand what you're talking about. Yes, globalist, you know, populist, nationalist, blah 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 blah. Like, understand a little bit about current affairs and 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 I guess view the world through different filters. Yeah, whether and, it's economics or whatever. And to know that you have the ability to go and do your own research, because quite honestly, it sounds like a blanket statement, but for the most part, the people in power do think we're all idiots. They think we're not going to look this stuff up. They think we're not going to vote based off of knowledge and policies and things that are, and rather than what the media says, because that's what goes, right? They, they really do think that. Like, I'm just speculating. I would say 90 plus percent of people in power, when we're talking about politics or anywhere else, think the average American is just plain stupid. But I think they're a little bit scared, though, these days. Now they are. Because... You know, traditionally, it'd be like, Chingo Bling, we ain't worried about him. He's just a little rapper, comedian dude from Texas. He ain't got no influence. Mm. But then you start seeing these little hit pieces from uh, Remescla.com. They want to make sure they cover their bases yeah. and, and label me, uh, uh, marginalize me, and, and, and shit like that. But, um, you know, that's the reason they deplatformed Alex Jones. That's the reason they do hit pieces on Rogan, where they're like, this guy isn't even a doctor. He's telling 21-year-olds that if they're healthy and, and this and that, uh, that they ain't got to be in no rush to take the jab. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, all right. What do you need him to do, clarify and say it again? Meanwhile, we brought up Eddie Murphy. I brought him up a couple weeks ago because he had said some, you know, some uneducated stuff about one of the shootings that had happened before the news had come Eddie out. Eddie Murphy? What do you say? I'm oh, not sorry, not Eddie Murphy, uh, Eddie Griffin. Oh, okay. My bad, remember. Uh, but and then the other day, someone sent me a clip of him talking about why he's not taking La Vacuna. Yeah. Making a whole lot of sense. And it's like, okay, yeah. Like, that sounds like he read some shit and came to an actual, like, educated, you know, uh, opinion of it. Plus, what do Republicans and, I guess, most black folk in America have in common? They don't really trust the government that much. And they don't really trust the jab all the way. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have such a big PR campaign. That's why they're marketing it. That's why, hey, if you see me rapping about the jab, that means I got paid. I said a hip. <laughs> a hip, a hip, a hip, a hip, hip. Get the jab up, uh, the shot. And we, we, we in this together in the, in the, and we can unite. <laughs> it's for your safety. Yeah. Put on the mask. Matter of fact, put on three. And if you're jogging outside, better wear four masks because that is safe for me. 
I'll get a jab, a jab. Okay. Dude, run into the booth right now. You just fucking spit out a fucking hot single right hey, now. Hey, Lefty Larry needs to rap that shit. You ain't lying. It's like, we're in this together. <laughs> what rhymes with that? <laughs> if you don't get the jab, my jab don't work. We could do this together. Look at the great weather. Let's enjoy it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could rap that shit like Fergie. <laughs> he, needs, he needs a little <laughs> boom. <laughs> He's there, like a Will I Am type beat. Dude, there was a song, right? Who who was it that came out with a? a I said we in this thing together. That's what it was, right? Oh, somebody did. Yeah, that? I think it was for like the shot. It was a legit old school rapper. Oh yeah yeah yeah. They hired a uh, home, uh, homeboy from Run DMC. What's his name? No, was it not, yeah. not Rev Run DMC? <laughs> <laughs> I had to, was it? I had to do deduction. Yeah yeah yeah. I believe okay. I believe they got DMC to to do a whole rap about the jab. And I get it. I get it. Like. You know, many, many smart people argue that, um, that, you know, many, many, many people argue that the folks that have been, you know, dying, that's just, that's just like a numbers game. Like 8,000 people, I think it's like 8,000 Americans a day die anyway. And if you're vaccinating th- such a large amount of people, if you do the math, it, it's like you're bound to have that coincidence happen. Like somebody was scheduled to die that week anyway. It just so happened that they were going to get the jab that week. So we start to be like, oh, wait a minute. It's because of the jab. So I'm just putting that out there because um, I know some people are probably screaming at their radio or their headphones like, Jingo, don't you understand statistics? Yeah, right. Uh, no, that's why we're entertainers on a podcast. Yeah, but yeah. Don't take financial advice from uh, from a guy named Chingo Bling, and uh, I'm I'm not a doctor. Uh, there was a stat, and I wish I'd written put it down today, but I didn't. Where the CDC is not going to be calculating, um, uh, man, because we're on YouTube, this episode's on YouTube, so I want to not say anything that's going to get it yeah, taken down. Yeah, we got to be careful. Use code, man. We got to do slanguage. Right? Yeah. Uh, la Cerveza. Anybody who's had uh, La Cerveza. Okay. Um, corona, Corona, Corona. Now, yeah. now. That one? Who has died, I think, without being jabbed. It, there was a number that they're no longer basically gonna gonna keep a, ca- a tally of a counter. You know, they have these uh. life counters and shit. And I can't remember what it was because people were like, okay, you're not gonna count that anymore, but you are gonna count the people that happened to die and maybe uh, had it, but didn't necessarily die from it. Remember how that, that was a big thing? Like they keep mm-hmm. counting that as a, a beer death, mm. but they had it, they didn't die because of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so it was some real shady, like wh- why be so secretive about certain numbers and counts and keep things to keep certain tallies going and keep other tallies hidden or not track yeah. of anymore? Yeah, all this like trust the science stuff has been a huge mess because it feels like it's been an experiment even for the people at the highest levels on how to learn how to report these things. I mean, everything about it, because, for example, when there was controversy, when I guess when Trump was promoting the hydroxychloroquine seems to be working, it's a malaria medicine, it's very inexpensive. It's been around forever. You know, it's been around, you know, from a risk management perspective, there's not a lot of side effects, it seems to work, it's for malaria, it's already FDA approved. Boy... Anything Trump was saying, if he said the sky was blue, no, it ain't. So what did they do? They started running these quote-unquote studies on the hydroxychloroquine. And uh, they were studying it in the wrong way, like the variables. It was like they're giving it to people who are already, already done been suffering con el coronal, coronal. And they're giving it to them too last minute or they're not putting the zinc with it and the other, the Z-pack. They're not mixing it how, how it was being touted mm-hmm. as a good therapeutic or treatment um it's just example after example of this trust the science because what ends up happening is trust the science it it ends up happening like this you see a headline on msnbc um that headline was spun and framed a certain way from i guess a, a writer at msnbc that person had to read a study and interpret it their way. And then that study was conducted by a group of scientists that kind of wrote it and interpreted the hypothesis and all that shit. The correlations and the stats and the data, they interpreted it their way. So really, you have like a chain of human error and along the way, it's getting interpreted. And then you're reading the newspaper and now you're interpreting, quote unquote, the science. But depending on what channel or what scientist or what uh, university study some of this quote-unquote science is getting debunked, 
It's, get, it's not peer-to-peer reviewed. It's not the gold standard. It's not a double-blind placebo. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So your science is varying and it's ever-changing. So now they're finding out like, oh, what about this medicine? Or, oh, they didn't test it that way? Oh, that wasn't peer-to-peer reviewed? And then, for example, somebody might get in trouble for saying something. Let's just say Rogan or somebody. They might get in trouble for asking certain questions or saying certain things. And then fast forward four months later, now you now it becomes like, okay, it's okay to say that now. And it's like, okay, you're literally, who, what was it, man? Um, um, fuck, who was it on YouTube that some of the comments were like, I think we watched it on the last episode where it's like, this person's literally saying stuff we weren't allowed to say. Oh, Trevor Noah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Trevor Noah was critiquing the CDC's messaging and the rules at, in terms of if you're vaccinated right. and you're outdoors and you're with other vaccinated people and you're six feet apart, then you don't have to wear a mask. And like all these weird charts, people in the comments are like, he's literally saying stuff that we would have got banned for saying two months ago. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Trust the science, trust the science, trust the science. And then in the midst of that confusion and, and hysteria and propaganda, you have a ton of fear so there's like the pandemic of fear and it's like because i know in the beginning i was like man it's on every surface you know what i'm saying like it's everywhere um i need to wear these gloves it's like my debit card got to go in like this as i'm holding my breath and now it's like number way me you know and everybody had the right to be that afraid and startled mm-hmm. and concerned with what was going on Fuck yeah the entire country the world but specifically here in the united states we were all like really looking out for one another and like let's take it slow 14 and, days yeah 14 days turned into 14 months and now we're going on 18 months or whatever and uh understandable but after 30 60 days it seems like people had a pretty good idea of what was going on and they started to really paint the picture of what they wanted to be seen and what they wanted to be heard and what they wanted the people to do. And to this day, they're still doing that because if you're not wearing your mask, you have the, the party and the group and the side of the people that are going to be shitting on you. And the other side, or those that like are like in the middle, I think, and somebody made a good point of this recently where they're like, a lot of people just, they don't like to be, uh, yell, they don't want to be yelled at. They don't want to, they don't want to seem like they're a bad, you know, citizen. So they just put it on to kind of go along with it. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of those people. They mm-hmm. don't know nothing from nowhere. They don't know shit about fuck. They're just going along with it. So if they don't seem like a bad person, they don't get yelled at by anybody. Some people say, um, and then you have the virtue signalers who are yeah. just like, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Some people like Lefty Larry, yeah. Lefty Larry needs to do a skit like this where, I wear a mask because I don't want to be confused as a Trumpy Republican. Right. So that's funny to me. It's like we're living in these polarizing times where everything gets politicized from have you got the shot yet? Are you going to get it? To why you ain't got no mask on? Why are you so anxious for these mask bans? I mean, uh, mask mandates to get, to get lifted, right? right. Um, it's like you can li- if you see someone driving alone in their car with two masks, you already know they Biden riding. Mm. They riding with that boy Biden. Right they trying Biden. to build back better. Unless maybe they're an Uber, Uber driver and they're just like, man, I got all these people in my fucking car. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I hope they have the, the heater on as well with, by themselves with the mask on in their car. Right? And hold your breath. Yep. Um, this might be a good segue. Have you heard this? That they're calling Fauci the father of the virus. I have. So that uh, Steve Bannon show called a pandemic war room, war room pandemic. They be going in on that shit. Like they've been saying that the stuff that, uh, what's this? Josh, Josh Rogan. Josh Rogan was saying on Joe Rogan about, Hey, Trump's out of office, but now journalists from both sides of the aisle are, you know, right. Cause they're supposed to be, um, objective, but they're right. not, but they're not basically journalists are now saying, Hmm, it's funny how they were doing gain of function research on these viruses in these labs that were funded by your tax dollars. So the American people cut a check. Well, actually, Fauci, Fauci signed it. Um, I guess the argument is we have to study these viruses. I know I'm saying a lot, man. YouTube is like the fucking algorithm. <laughs> the AI is like, he's saying too much. He should have pulled it off 10 minutes ago. He knows too much. <laughs> Um, basically they're saying we need to really look into 
how did it leak where did it start where did it come from because in the beginning you weren't allowed to say maybe it came from that lab right there before that sentence came out you were off the internet i'm already off you were banned but but think about it man like in the beginning it was like um should we entertain the hypothesis that maybe it came from that fucking lab that's studying that fucking virus right there? No, 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 no. It's, it's a fucking bat soup from a pangolin in a wet market. Like, okay, that's another hypothesis. That's two different theories. Can, have we explored both? Well, we already kind of looked into it. Who did? We did. Y'all did? Y'all checked y'all's own shit? Yeah, no. Yeah, we're good. It didn't come from here. Oh, the friends of the people running it? Yeah, oh, cool. It, because this epidemiologist community... They're all, their careers and their funding and everything about their existence is based on their ability to continue to fall in line in this, uh, this system of, look, man, we got to get funding from these governments so that we can do our research and then we can all get paid and get published and yada, yada, yada. So the NIH, National Institute of Health, and like the World Health Organization, you got the CDC and you got these virologists. Well, basically, man... That lab in Wuhan, a lot of people, especially now, now that Trump ain't in office no more and that that doesn't politicize it as much, a lot of like journalists are really trying to say, hey, man, we need to really entertain that idea and that hypothesis. And because arguably, as the Steve Bannon uh, pan- war room pandemic show be saying, they'd be like, hey, if he's the one that signed the check and he's the one that brought it back because they had already got paused yeah unofficially brought it back if i'm not mistaken right yeah kind of like during trump's term they didn't go holla at trump be like hey man we were doing this research but uh we need to bring it back he they just kind of went and uh had like a page two addendum that where it said if in the case of um damn what was it it was like wasn't um, it also under obama when it really got restarted yeah it was without even his knowledge i think Oh, I don't, I don't know about that, but I just, I do know it got paused. But in that document, they had that little loophole. There was a loophole that said, if it's considered national security, then they could be able to unpause it. And that's what they did. Mm. They, they were just arguing like, mm, this is important. Trump don't got to know. Just approve it. And they had the funding. So they had the lab open, which many, uh, I guess, uh, I guess reports show that it was, it wasn't the cleanest. Like it was just... They're dealing with dangerous bugs in there with gain of function research, meaning how do we edit the genes of these motherfucking viruses to make them more contagious? Yeah, more powerful. And there's clips, I think back from 2018, 2019, these people that run these these organizations I just mentioned, where they're literally saying, I'll, I'll send you the clip, where they're saying stuff like, um, you know, the coronavirus is a great virus to to manipulate and build on because of the protein compound and all you got it they're like oh it's really easy all you got to do is fix this and and nudge that and it becomes super contagious and they're like yeah they're all excited right and here we are here we are uh so thanks a lot for doing this fucking gain of function research <laughs> dangerous experiments and i think we're banned everywhere around the world except for one place or two places, and that happened to be one of the places that they were allowing it to happen. But somebody sent me a really interesting uh, video. It was either, man, the regs, you know, like Ed or, or Gabe or Hopsada or somebody that was right after that episode come out, the Josh Rogan on Rogan, Okay. where it was um, Alex Jones talking about, and it was really interesting, and I hope I can find it, I'll send it to you as well, but he was like, that reporter, because he worked for CNN, I think, and, and MSNBC, the Josh Rogan fella, and someone else, Oh, he works at all in places? Yeah, yeah. Damn, he's, yeah. he's lefty Larry. Right. So he, he the, Alex Jones was spinning it in a way that he's like, it's almost like damage control. Like they sent them in in there to, se- to send this message out to, you know, the world basically, where he was calling him out on things that were already coming out anyway, but Josh Rogan, you know, is the guy that's like putting the spotlight on it. So they're out there if you wanted to go look for him, but he definitely put the beacon on it. But then also the way he was talking about certain things and yeah, Fauci's like the, the guy at the top of the pyramid kind of thing. Yeah. But also like he had a very uh, slick ways of contrasting the goods and the bads about those things. Mm-hmm. And the people that don't know nothing, us included, I would say, mm-hmm. kind of just hear like, man, that's crazy. It makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about this, you know, these leaks that are coming out, but kind of forget about this other stuff that kind of seems, sounds like damage control. I don't know. I'd have to send it to you. So, so you're saying, you're saying that um, this Josh Rogan character, they're letting him do, do interviews 
to soften the blow as to when this info oh yeah really yeah interest that's an interesting strategy um but here we are man the american people you know we're just paying our taxes (laughs) we're just paying our taxes trying to live our life and you know we trust (laughs) to a certain extent right we trust our government and stuff like that to look out for us and to make the right decisions and spend our tax dollars in a way that's going to keep us keep america being the baddest bitch um I mean, corruption's been in the game since the game started, right? I mean, literally since the Founding Fathers founded everything that we sit on today to now. But it's so, it, there's so much more money and so much more influence and power that is gained through this system as the years and decades go on that now it's, it's almost impossible to think that anybody that really is running for these offices, these, these seats of public power, have any real like backbones for the people, for their constituents, as they love to say. Yeah, some of these motherfuckers agree. Most of them, right? And uh, this thing with what's going on in D.C., which isn't on the list either, but wanting to make D.C. a state, Mm. you know, it's boring as fuck to really look into it, but it's interesting as why it's never been a state. And the whole idea was, to sum it up, I guess, is that people were supposed to go to D.C. and represent their constituents and then go back to their states. You're not supposed to live there. You're not supposed to have all this power in the capital. And you're also not supposed to have a state that can overrun, you know, the government's power there. It's fucking crazy. And people are pushing this shit like the pa- passed in the house already and then you had punk ass republicans like newt gingrich <laughs> that uh changed congress in a way where it was no longer hey rob is serving his constituents and then he's coming to dc for a little bit to uh handle some you know some work and then he's gonna head back to to his state now it's like no 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 no, no. don't leave we gotta do some fundraising you gotta bring in some money just stay in dc dc has a team they got this team they got culture now it's like its own little thing and we want to make it a state to play with the numbers Mm -hmm. the same way they want to pack the courts and 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 fucking control every goddamn thing but um but yeah that that concept of like the gain of function research just do your own research on that gain of function research and when people would call Fauci like, oh, he's the father of the virus. He literally, he's up here, highest paid government official dictating what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. And meanwhile, he's partially responsible for this shit leaking. And, you know, if somebody like like uh, Alex Jones or somebody had said it, which he probably did, when these motherfuckers say it first, it's like, oh, really? Tinfoil hat guy, really? <laughs> You're serious, Really? And then now you got these other lefty Larrys are like, uh, we should really entertain the hypothesis that it leaked from this fucking lab right there in Wuhan, uh, help partially funded by American dollars. So these motherfuckers are all in cahoots. We can't even put all the blame on the Wuhan, on the Wuhan, uh, on the C, uh, what is it? The CP, what, PP, who? PP, Olympic long. <laughs> <laughs> Olympic PP. Inches of freedom. People no. love that shit, dude. The, uh, C- Damn, man. CCP. CCP. God, damn. I was like, what, what is, are you trying to say? What is going on with my brain this morning? Did you take your Delta I, 8? Or I'm your trying to build Shell back Shock? better. <laughs> yeah, I did take a Delta 8. Uh, ShellshockCBD.com. 10% off. Promo code CHINGO. It will show up on a piss test if you do the Delta 8. But you'll feel great. But you'll feel great. <laughs> Pop a Delta 8, you're going to feel great. Uh, the Caitlyn Jenner. We talked about it briefly on the, on the Patreon episode. But uh, I've been seeing more people you know, from the right really putting the line in the sand of why they can't vote for caitlin jenner i just wanted to get your thoughts yeah, on it uh what reasons because uh he's trans or what i mean that's a, that's a main one right and someone also a few people have said that i think even biden had mentioned how the republican party has like an identity crisis going on like a mini identity crisis and this i guess doesn't help the cause which i understand i, I don't know man like all right, it's a it's a trans person. It's uh, very unorthodox for a for a Republican Party. I don't know the religious beliefs of it, but just I guess if you want to go with like old school, what the beliefs are of this party, that person doesn't identify or to them with that party, and people are going in. Uh, Jesse from Lexit, uh, some other individuals who I forgot their names of that run organizations on the right are going for them, and they're kind of having like their own little feuds in the in the gra- on the gram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, do we even know who all is running for that spot in California? Not all yet, I don't think, no. But there yeah, are several so, people. Yeah, so, I mean, it's premature. Like, I get it. Um, I, I wouldn't get too worked up over it yet, regardless of which side you're on. Whether mm-hmm. you're like, this is it. You know, this is it. I saw the commercial, and I don't need to hear nothing else. It's like, just settle down. Because we don't know, 
we don't know who the fuck else might throw their their name in the in the ring, right? Yeah. Their hat in the ring, whatever the fuck the term. Is. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't live in California, so I mean, it really don't make me no difference. But it would be nice to see California bounce back from the amount of uh, homelessness and crime and taxes and, and shutdowns. To me, from the outside looking in, to me that's very unfortunate, and I wonder. How many of like La Raza and people out there? I know there's a lot of conservatives and Republicans and stuff in Cali, but to the people that are just traditionally like, no, but way, it's que los democratas, those are the good guys, fool. Hey, you gotta, you know, if it has a D at the end of their name, you just vote party. I see no mas because the Republicans are racist, KKK lovers. Like, if that's how you think, do you honestly approve of the job Newsom and like Mayor Garcetti and these people are doing? Do y'all honestly think they're doing a good job? Please let us know. Like, I've yet to meet anybody that's like, no, no, it's just fake news. Newsom is, he's, he's trying, bro. He's down with the raza. Fu, hey, fu. He kicks it with George Lopez, dog. He cares about the people. <laughs> Governor Newsom, man, he's cool with George, fool. Why would George be cool with somebody that's hurting us? Why? That's not happening. Newsom's doing a good job. Fake news. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. If you live in Cali and you approve of the job, tell us something good. News. If you approve of Newsom, tell us why. What is he doing besides keeping y'all shut down? Are, are schools open over there yet? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think they're fully open. That homelessness is a motherfucker, man. Um, that crime going up. They trying to defund police. Mayor Garcetti. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Remember, these are career politicians. Like, Newsom is what, son-in-law or some shit, nephew to uh, Pelosi. Uh, Garcetti, he's, he's up for a position in Biden's administra- uh, cabinet. So it's like, that's what they do, man. Yeah. I don't understand. Now that I, now that I like, got more into politics and shit, it really makes you wonder, like, man, these Democrat policies, I never, you, I never put two and two together when I was just like, what, two years ago? When I'm just like, oh, Democrats are good. I watched the view. Um, I never put two and two together. Like, oh, we got this many homeless people. You know, I don't know what Republican. Uh, are there Republican mayors anywhere? Uh, that's a good question. Is that a thing? There's got of like be. a big urban city. Yeah, probably not. I might have to like Google a fucking list. Of, Let's uh, duck duck go that shit for the next episode. <laughs> yeah, fuck Google. <laughs> fuck big tech, homie. Speaking of DC, they banned uh, dancing at weddings. That is. That is, I don't understand. That. Straight up, I mean, why? So, what, 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 what is the point? Like for for Corona? Yeah, yeah. Just y'all can't be dancing. No, no dancing. Oh at my god! Oh, let me guess, Democrat mayor? Of course. Man, y'all don't see it yet, huh? Y'all ain't put two and two together. <laughs> if twenty twenty ain't open your eyes, bro, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, let's see. There's uh, let's see, the the CDC director. I don't know if I put it on there. Says the uh, CDC guidelines will be updated as more people get vaccinated and there's less infection in the U.S. We are cautious. Uh, so the mayor, I don't know, Mayor, mayor Millstone nears as vaccine to be cleared. She here, she was talking about kids having to wear. Let me see if this is a clip. Having to wear masks outside for children if they're playing soccer. I believe. Oh, Lord. And that's been floating out there from all different sources on, on mass guidance. Some people say it's been complicated or, or there are many different levels to it. Why not just say if you get vaccinated, you can do almost anything? Um, right. It's a really good question. So so first thing to note is we at CDC have to put guidance out for individuals and for populations. We have to do it for all eight regions of the country, whether they have high rates of vaccination or low rates of vaccination. Um, and so we have over the last several months put out three iterations of our guidance as we've seen more people get vaccinated and less disease. And so as we have more and more people vaccinated and less disease, we will continue to put out further right. iterations. And we are cautious for that reason because there are still some places, some communities that have less than 20% vaccination and still a lot of disease. We still have some places in this country that have over 200 cases per 100,000. Really extraordinary case rates. You know, the flip side of, of how I ask that question, I don't think it's asked this way quite enough. And I do hear frustration among vaccinated people who say, 
why am I being prohibited from doing stuff? Because there are others who refuse to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So why not say to people who won't get vaccinated, okay, fine, but you can't do stuff. Yeah, you know, right now we're not saying you can or you can't. These are recommendations. And for the most part, if you're vaccinated, we have re recommended that you can do almost anything. We're asking that people who are vaccinated remain, uh, remain in masks when they're indoors. Indoors. When they're indoors. Well, but, but you know, but, but, you know but if, if I'm working, if I'm working with a but, you know, if I'm working with everyone in my office is also vaccinated. Why? So I was going to say <laughs> indoors and really in public <laughs> settings. So, you know, in our private settings guidance, we say if you know for certain that everyone around you has been vaccinated, they're not at risk of they have no um, high risk people in their in their households. Then we say in those settings that you could take off your mask. You know, uh, a, a matter of local interest to you, Brookline Mass down the road from where you lived and worked for years. They're not lifting the outdoor mask mandate despite your guidance. You know, what's your message to Brookline? Um, you know, this is going to be community by community, and and some communities may be more conservative. I will tell you, I was there not to not. To is that the lady that was like crying one time, talking about I am terrified? This is uh, a director at the CDC. I don't know if that I was her. I think that was her. Was bro. I want to say that was her. The clip's way too fucking long. I thought I had it to the point where it, basically uh, they're making kids. I forgot what city and what state wear their masks outside while they're playing soccer. And meanwhile, no professional sports. You're not wearing masks when you're playing real soccer, like you know professional soccer football basketball baseball whatever the fuck but they want the kids to do it which are the less susceptible to all this okay so when a decision or a suggestion like that gets made um whatever state right mm -hmm. so do those suggestions come from is it the cdc that is that a national federal thing where the cdc says hey all high school soccer students must wear masks or is that a local type of decision the cdc it it trickles down from them so they make the guidelines and then it's up to your local officials to enforce them or to put them into place which is why you know desantis g santis you know has the his new executive order i think which goes into effect july for uh, june 1st i think where it supersedes all local uh, ordinances so no more like no matter miami tampa whatever no more of your bullshit you can't bully the citizens anymore it's all lifted. You and that goes for schools and everything. Everything. Oh. All businesses, no outdoor, indoor, none of this shit. It's just, it's done with. So That's why they mad at Florida, man. Oh, so mad. They mad at Florida. Anybody that wants to keep the fear going, keep the restrictions going, uh, take your liberties and use them as a carrot on a stick to get you to do what they want you to do. Uh, that's why they can't stand DeSantis and, and Florida. And Texas needs to catch up, man. Governor Abbott, he's doing a pretty good job. But in contrast to DeSantis in Florida, like mm -hmm. how gangster were they're like, nah, man, you're not you're not about to block no road, which protests. And you know what's funny, man? To me, it's common sense that that telling someone, hey, y'all can't be blocking highways is not the same thing as I'm attacking your First Amendment right to peacefully assemble and protest. Right. To me, it's obvious that that's two totally different things. But to people on my Facebook and my Twitter and shit like that, you know, raza. They'd be like, oh yeah, what do you think about those racist ass, Nazi ass Florida people that want to take away your right to uh, peacefully protest? Like, why? Because he said you can't block a freeway? Like, y'all don't see the difference? Yeah. Did you see the video of the gentleman, the big white dude with a bald head? Where he that was, was just like, like in Plano or something? Well, yeah, it was in Texas. Yeah, you're right. It was in Plano. And the cops just standing there. He's just like letting. He's just like, sir, get back in your car. Letting these motherfuckers. Like you're talking about, traffic is blocked. And there's one. And there's one. One dude with a Mexican flag. I couldn't read what it said on it. I was like, what? Are you, what's going on here? What? What's? Why are you blocking six lanes of of a highway? Hay una gente, hay una gente bien pendeja, pero bien rete pendeja, <laughs> rete pendeja. Pero super rete pendejísima. That, like, bro. Okay. When you look at what's going on in Colombia, it started the, like that. That's how it started. You start letting motherfuckers uh, uh, block freeways and... Uh, you give them an inch and they burn the city uh, down. Fuck up a metro system, like blocking ambulances. A lady lost her baby um, because she was in an ambulance trying to get to the hospital. And, uh, you know, they were blocking shit. They weren't letting it through. So... Oh, yeah. That's some asshole shit. Like, I get it, man. You got grievances... With the government, there's certain shit you want attention to. You want to occupy some shit, right? 
you want to uh, you want to make your voice heard and you're frustrated over taxes or whatever it is. But up to a certain extent, there, there's a fine line between, hey, the government's killing us and y'all fucking shit up. Y'all, y'all taunting the police. Y'all, y'all doing this shit night after night after night. Uh, like in Colombia, homeboy did a, uh, stupidly, tried to do a tax reform and a health care reform in the middle of the country trying to bounce back from a pandemic. And people were already frustrated and ready to protest. And um, you have a fucking shit show in, in Colombia. And it's interesting because the way it gets polarized and the two different... Like, if you're watching Al Jazeera or if you're watching Reuters, like, depending on who it is that's reporting on it, it's like... Like, one way is, the government is killing us because we're protesting. And then the other side is, no, the government had to use some force because yeah. y'all, y'all getting violent out there. And he already put a stop to the tax thing. He says, never mind, my bad. I realize I pissed y'all off. Let me take the tax thing off. But um, that that reminds me, uh, I want to bring up. I don't know if I put it on the list this this guy running for Congress in Dallas, uh, which makes for kind of circles back with to the Plano, yeah. Plano thing, and then these people with power, right? But might as well just said I need to move my car because otherwise I won't pick oh. up the trash. I okay, forgot. yeah, because the the, can, the cans weren't out there when I got here, so I'll pause it and then we'll come back. Oh yeah, I forgot to take the trash out, and we are back. Sorry yeah. for the pause. No, that's cool. Who took the trash out? You think Money Solar? Probably, uh, probably Luisa. <laughs> okay. My bad. Way to go, Chingo. Good, good job. Way to be the man of the house, Chingo Bling. Way to be the man of the house. All right, so the this election is actually over. It was a, it was like a special election for the vacant seat of a congressman in Dallas, uh, Arlington, Waxahachie area or something, mm-hmm. who had died in February due to the beer, the beer virus. La corona, corona. Yeah, and um, the the t- like the leading person in, in in the race was his wife actually to take his seat, mm. and then there was uh, another Republican, and then like probably six or so other candidates like uh, there was like a democrat in third place but one and i put it on the on the list i believe is this guy whose ad went viral uh, a couple of months ago a couple of weeks ago actually but this was ad was originally from march uh, named big dan did you see any any mm. footage of this guy all right while i pull it up i'll just say that this guy what was, did uh, he said what did he said this guy was from originally i think he was born in like jersey Ran for uh, Congress, like maybe, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago in Georgia, I think. And then recently in 2019 in uh, Nevada and lost all those, you know, races cl- closely, but, you know, he lost them. And then came to uh, to Dallas to run for this uh, empty seat. And I just want you to see this ad and we'll maybe chat about, you know, these people with uh, that are they're vying for power and uh, see what you think about it real quick. All right. Here's Big Dan's ad. It's gonna probably gonna be an ad because you know YouTube. Oh no! Three dirty jobs in the world: professional wrestling, politician. I'm gonna pause it real quick. Pitch buffer. And Ryan, let's go, boys! God damn. Well, I'm telling you, bro. We called AT and T. I Dude. guess I gotta schedule the, the the guy to come out here. I'm a, I gotta call him. Here's a better one. Three dirtiest jobs in the world: professional wrestling, politician, and bull riding. Let's go, boys! We call that bull Nancy Pelosi. It's the beast. Now that's Texas tough, baby. <laughs> Two out of three dirty jobs done. I'm Big Dan Rodeimer. Texas has big problems. We need a big fighter to solve those problems. The communists in D.C. are ruining America. We have a big problem. Texas, send Big Dan to Congress. I know how to handle Nancy Pelosi and stop her bull. And I'll put a boot right in her socialist platform. Stepping cat Well, it looks like I already did. Uh, Men in women's bathrooms, boys and girls sports, higher taxes, higher gas prices. They're building a wall around D.C., but they're not protecting our borders. They're laughing at us. Now they're going to try to take away our guns? Oh, hell no. 
I moved my family of seven back to Texas because I wanted to raise my kids in a constitutional friendly state. Here in Texas, we are free. We live free. We are a threat to those in power. They hate Texas. They hate our way of life. The communists in DC want to shut down our churches, close our businesses, indoctrinating our children, communism in our classrooms, make our daughters unsafe in sports and school, destroy American borders and our American history. We must stop them. Hire me to represent you, and I'll go to DC and kick some left wing ass. Voters in the Texas 6th Congressional District, vote Big Dan in the special election. I'll fight for you and the Texas way of life. Let's make America Texas again. I'm Dan Rodimer, and I approve this message. So, go ahead. So, okay, well, when you first see that ad, what do you think? Pretty damn, I mean, I'll say what I said real quick. I thought it was great. The messaging is great. People in Texas are concerned about those things. And if somebody was really going to run on those you know, policies or ideas and then fulfill the, the mission of working on those, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you like you about to say something. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, I think the messaging works well when you're talking to Republicans and conservatives mm-hmm. who already believe that these uh, Congress people and the government people in D.C., you know, the swamp, they're on some bullshit. They're more worried about, you know, letting boys and the girls sports and, and men in the, in the women's locker rooms and stuff like that uh, and wanting to shut down churches and they want to tax the gas and so on. But to get that messaging in, in the head of a Democrat, a lefty, a lefty Larry, they're going to be like, uh, they're not shutting down churches. They're just trying to keep us safe. It's not an attack on your religious freedoms. Um, you know, girl, uh, boys and girls sports is for equality. Okay, Rob, that's for equity because trans people have been marginalized and they're not allowed to participate in sports and you guys are uh, 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 discriminating them. So how do we, I guess the real question is, how do we take these concepts and, and persuade people on the left to say, you know, I think it is unfair how they're treating uh, churches. You know, I, I kind of feel like they are starting to persecute Christians. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, how do you get them to the point where they're seeing like, hmm, my price at the pump has gone up and oh these things are due to these swamp motherfuckers like pelosi and them um did you see the stuff i posted from our church mm, oh when he's talking about border and uh, the on, ballots. Your, on your facebook because your your audience lost it yeah because they're triggered lefties <laughs> um the stuff he'd be saying he was like you know cnn you know they caught him on tape saying uh <laughs> if it bleeds <laughs> it leads you Dude, know maybe he thought and dude, my comments, bro, are like, um, oh, makes a lot of sense now voting the way you do. And they were attacking me how religion is bad, church is bad, God is bad, this church is bad. Um, what else were they saying? I mean, that kind of sums it all up. Everything basically was bad I mean, about they it. were triggered, triggered. Oh, huh, sorry, Chingo, I'm out. You lost me here. They were saying separation of church and state. What, can you explain what the fuck that means? You're, you're, well, basically, you're not supposed to have the power to shut down, which goes back real quick. I wanted to mention Canada. You were talking about they're not shutting down your churches. Tell that to the Canadians who are having their churches shut down. And that guy that, was, that we played a week, couple weeks back where he was you know, telling the, people, the cops to get out of the church, they arrested that guy. They're fucking taking over because they can't. They're, they're not supposed to be able to do that. There's supposed to be a separation of those powers. But it, it seems like people don't care anymore or they're just saying like no if the government says shut your shit down like they're gonna shut it down like not supposed to be able to do that i don't know it it, you're supposed to keep your belief you are supposed to keep those those separations of beliefs and the way you run the government from how you run a church is supposed to be a completely different thing but it seems like they're really meshing together so i guess because uh the pastor of the church we go to i guess because he was saying political type things Mm -hmm. everyone lost their shit oh Oh, preachers aren't supposed to be talking about this. Right. Oh, preachers. And of course, I tell everybody, like, did you listen to the sermon? Like, obviously not. You don't even know how he contextualized it with the Bible and how he made it relevant or whatever. Right. I, yeah, yeah. And and, and he, he, pre- he um, I guess he, do- he prefaces it in a way where it's like, we're talking about this because... 
X, Y, Z. Like it, it ties in. And this is stuff that we're going through today. But also if you look at Corinth in the book of Corinthians and blah, 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 blah. You know, because because they, they be calling out postmodernism, uh, Marxism. They be calling all that shit out, talking about how they're indoctrinating these kids and how this country is going to crap. And um, and they're really starting to like impede upon people's religious freedoms, stuff like that. Yeah, dude, you're the audience, man, unfortunately. <clears throat> and I can see where some of them are coming from if they're still younger, if that makes sense. Like if they're, I don't know, younger millennials, I guess I'm borderline kind of older-ish millennial. But uh, if you're very anti-organized religion, which I can understand, I really still can, and you see people mixing the two politics and church so closely together, they'll ruffle some feathers. But I think as they all get older, they'll kind of take their foot off the gas and understand that it's it's not so church is a completely bad thing and God is a bad thing. and all. It's just, they're so, they haven't formed their ideas of these things yet very well. So when you, somebody like you or, or a politician even brings it into the picture, they're like, no, that's, you know, this part of religion ruined certain parts of countries or the world, or it's because of this part in the Middle East because of religion. It's yeah, like they, Sharia law. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they cherry pick it, these it, things and make their argument. They listen to NPR. That's what it is. <laughs> But no, you're, you're absolutely right. They do these blanket approach like, um, <laughs> oh, Chingo's posting <laughs> in my book. <laughs> this falls under mega church and mega churches are bad because their pastors have Rolls Royces or whatever. I don't know what, what Pastor Ed Young drives. I'm sure he don't live in a shack. Um, but you can't read someone's mind and be like, they're, they don't believe their own crap, and they're using that, they're misspending that money, and they're not putting back. It's like, you don't know that. Just because one pastor of a mega church somewhere at some point did some sketchy stuff, you want to be like, oh, all these people get molested. And it's like, no, that was just these Catholic priests, that you know what I'm saying? Yeah, or, yeah. or whatever it may be. Like, I, I guess I'll put it to you this way. Um, I, I feel that it is poor strategy. It is very bad strategy to make these blanket statements and to live your life. And Everybody has a filter of yeah. how they view the world. Be careful that you don't have a victim filter. Um, be careful you don't have a Marxist filter where every way you look, it's like, oh, that's racist, that's racist, oh, that's the patriarch, um, that's gender roles, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everything is uh, divisive, uh, everything's racism. That's a bad strategy. You're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on a lot of stuff in life playing a victim. It's going to be a lot of friends you're not going to make. It's going to be a lot of experiences you're never going to have. And um, you're just less likely to be a productive member of society if you go around looking at shit through a victim filter. And, and, and I, I tie that in with like, you know, if one church did something bad or one pastor did something bad, that don't mean you got to be so absolutist and be like, <laughs> oh, I'm out, Chingo. I'm out. You know, I can tolerate some of your political stuff, but this is just too far. <laughs> Sharia law, separation of church and state. And it's like, bro, fucking relax already. Relax, Lefty Larry. If you really want to be a, a, a communist socialist, man, hop on a raft, bro. Move to Cuba. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Catch a flight to Venezuela. Go to Colombia right now because they're on the verge. Uh, I don't know what's going on with El Salvador. And they're, they're saying their leader is, is teetering on um, the brink of dictatorship. dictatorship and yeah. it all depends on who's, who's reporting it and, and all that. Yeah. Um, to go back real quick to the Dallas election, the point of kind of bringing that up was that, you know, the guy's messaging was, was what somebody on the right would want to listen to, but w the, the way that you described the Jenner ad that we played last week on the Patreon episode, where she did a really, yeah, she did a really, I had to think about that. She did a really good job of contrasting, right? Mm -hmm. California prior and after and all that. There's, there's not a lot of contrast there to try to win new votes, to try to swing other prospective, you know, voters to your party or to your direction. And that place that, you know, the area he was, or that they were, because the election's over, and they're going to a second round, I believe, uh, that's at the end of this month, and the, the, the former congressman's wife and the other Republican is, are in the lead. So it's going to be red regardless, and it was probably going to be red anyway, um, just because Arlington and those areas are fucking red. But uh, the idea is that how can these people make a move to, to swing other people's perspective and make the messaging a little more... I don't know, 
uh digestible for those people because lefty larry ain't voting for that shit so so in other words how could we hypothetically improve his ad so let's just say when he talked about they, them shutting down churches mm-hmm. maybe show psh, 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 like three little headlines like three little examples of uh you know this happened in you know california or this happened here you know what i mean like maybe illustrate real life examples so that people can be like okay i i, I didn't think they were really persecuting christians like that yeah <laughs> or whatever or even the fuck a line from the constitution that the government shall not you know enforce anything among f- free whatever it is uh practicing religious practicing whatever people mm-hmm. like you just can't do that and that's happening across the country and it's also it, it's that you know it's so right leaning that we're like fuck yeah man make, finally someone <laughs> says it brother make, yeah make america texas again i like that i think that's fucking great because fucking born and raised here but it's just you're not gonna win new voice or new eyes new voices new ears with that kind of messaging it's like nancy pelosi's a nice nice lady why would you name a bull after her you know what i'm saying <laughs> she is a devil but still um yeah no i feel what you're saying oh it's, also uh, and then last point is in that area in that general in that special election rather there was a potential, you know, I think 1.1 or 1.2 million voters. You know how many people actually came out and voted for this empty congressional seat? I think it was like 100,000. Mm-hmm. So, it's again, it's a lack of, of um, either the area, either the state, the city, the whatever, the county, saying and giving the messaging to the people, all the, all the constituents from 18 to fucking 60, whoever voted, right? however old the oldest person was. This is a special election. It's a congressional seat. Your other, there's going to be other elections as well for city council and blah, blah, blah. If 100,000 people out of 1.1 million are voting, you're not really having representation because you're just completely oblivious to who's running the show. It's just, yeah. I, we're guilty of that shit as well. But yeah. that's just, that was a weird, that was crazy to see. Like over a million people and only 100,000 people voted for a congressperson or, yeah. any, or anybody for that matter. Yeah, I guess because it was a special one where like you said the guy died. Um <clears throat> One thing that plays a big role in how people perceive all this stuff is the amount of influence the left has over culture. They turn on the TV, they see Jimmy Kimmel. Give, you know, they, they watch SNL. Uh, LeBron James is saying something. Uh, MSNBC. They're in the airport. CNN is playing. So everywhere you look, you don't know that you're being fed a globalist agenda. That they're telling you, if you believe in strong borders, you're a fucking racist Nazi. And how dare you? How dare you want to put up a wall? It's like, they got a wall around D.C., like Homeboy said, yeah. right? It's like, they got a wall over there. Meanwhile, they letting all kind of shit come through. And I know I'm brown, and I'm supposed to be like, fuck that wall, right? Because I said it for years. You know, we're going to knock down a wall. It's like, okay. But right now, bro, right now, the most vulnerable are suffering because of that open border. Uh, Biden's policies has it to where, I mean, you know, a lot of these little thugs and gangsters and shit from Central America, they emptied out some of their prisons. Some of them motherfuckers coming in. You got people from terrorist watch lists, special interest countries, pedophiles. You have a pipeline. You have a, first of all, our gas pipelines are getting shut down, but you got a fucking pedophile pipeline. This got to be a clip. It's coming up through there and they're bringing all kind of uh, fentanyl and shit and um you know where that comes from china uh variants from other countries uh meanwhile they got a wall built around dc but they're allowing the most vulnerable to to suffer and and they're lying check this out i I gotta throw this out there because i might have mentioned it but we got to make it known right now they're claiming a win saying Oh, we just had 84% decrease in the amount of unaccompanied minors in our facilities. That's a win. 84% decrease. It's like, but it's already been fact-checked. Uh, Democrat Cuellar already uh, rang the alarm on that. And Chief Roy Villarreal has already debunked it as well. Which is, they're claiming a win, but the flow has not stopped. That 84% number comes from them funneling kids and playing like a shell game. They're moving the kids from the actual camps or whatever facilities and moving them over to uh the next department next door like homeland uh human services some shit and they're just moving them and they're saying look at this picture of a not overcrowded facility and it's like everyone's like but you're lying you just moved them next door it's like yeah but look at the picture that's all that fucking matters facts don't matter it's about persuasion so that way they've literally armed 
all the Democrats that voted for Biden so they could sleep better at night. And anytime I try to bring up the border, they could hop on my neck and be like, <laughs> Chingo, 84% decrease, brother. So, so check this out, man. When I do this skit, when I make time to film the skit of Lefty Larry being a guest on Taco Carlson's show, Taco Carlson is going to ask him, like, Biden has literally killed thousands and thousands of jobs and he hasn't even been in office that long. And Lefty Larry, of course, that this is how they argue. Um, Biden is creating more room for new jobs. Um, you know, a lot of people don't even like their job. So it's kind of good that they don't have it. That way they can go get a new one. Right? Like a stupid fucking argument. Um, like right now, what's happening with with the uh, the big news about... The jobs report? Yeah, the jobs report. And CNN and them thought it was a typo. It was so fucking low. And then Biden hops on TV and says, many people are saying that it's because they're collecting unemployment and they're getting paid to stay home and they'd rather not go to work. And, and he's like, we're not seeing any evidence of that. That's it. End of, end of sentence. I'm evidence of that. <laughs> Did you get my text last night uh, that Roy sent that I sent to you? Yeah, yeah. So you saw the, so now we have the, the actual stats from him, from yep. the person who would know that shit best. Yeah, prices, bro. Prices. Prices on, on, on man, let me, let's read some of this, bro. Straight from the chief's uh, brain. One second. Okay, Rob, send me. Here we go. <clears throat> Here's some prices from Coyotes. If you're a Mexican national, it's going to run you anywhere from 2,500 to five stacks. Central American, eight stacks to 15 stacks. If you're from India or China, 25 racks to 50 racks. Middle East, you can come over here for the small 45K to 75K. If you're a special interest alien, you know, you got terrorist ties, you're a pedophile, you're a gangbanger, you're Syrian, you're Somalian, it's going to run you $75,000 to $100,000. And the Plaza bosses, you know the cartel, they're going to charge you a tax to cross in their area, usually 300 to 800 bucks. So after you pay your thousands to the cartel to, to funnel you, you also got to pay, pay the uh, little taxes and the Plaza bosses, they'll give you a, 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 wrist, a wristband. But you'll only know that if you listen to Red Pill Tamales. How did you learn that? I listened to RPT. That's right. And knowing is half the battle. Now you know prices on smuggling. Dude. I just, I think about this when I read shit like that. It's crazy that my mom let me go anywhere by myself or even with one of my cousins when we'd go to Mexico. I know this is a long time ago, and, but I'm, I sh I'm sure it was just as unsafe back then. It depends, right? Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it, I'm sure it depends in certain areas. I don't know. I, I can't, this was 15 years ago, right? Or more probably. But to, to just to think to walk from wherever little fucking place we were in to a way to centro, you know, with my, you know, my cousin or whatever. Okay. Yeah, and then you just go and now you're like, oh wow. Yeah, that... we used to do that too. Las maquinitas. Oh yeah, we'd go play Street Fighter downtown. Fuck yeah. Uh, go to La Plaza Al Rol. We'd go cruising around on that expensive ass Pemex gas. Everybody had to pitch in. <laughs> but um, I guess it all depends. And can you imagine if if like if our moms understood global social economics right. to where you, you little Rob says, <laughs> Oye, ma, voy al centro con mi primo. A ver, espera. And then she'll do the calculation of like, okay, currently the drug ter trade is Colombians just use Mexicans as just distribution because they're good at smuggling and, and a geographical location. Uh, the Mexicans haven't taken over the cartel routes on local thugs based on economics and destabilization. You guys are good. Go ahead. Be safe. You need some money for popcorn. Okay. See you <laughs> at eight. Don't, don't, don't be late. Versus do, 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 do. No, they got thugs out here right now extorting people. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Go left only. Don't go right. That's dangerous. What do you mean? No, I don't know. Like the way when you were uh, on your ride along, you're like, yeah, hey, let's go right. Let's not go left. Oh, I know, man. The unofficial ride along. The unofficial, unofficial. <sighs> crazy shit, man. <sighs> crazy world. Uh, what do we wrap up today's episode with? What else? Uh, is there anything on that list or anything yeah, off the top of your head? I mean, a lot of it was just mask related stuff. I mean, there was a, a teacher who said he, he refused to make his athletes wear masks and they fired him. New Hampshire track coach Brad Keyes was fired for not requiring his athletes to wear masks when running. My homeboy's a teacher in New Hampshire. Word. I'm, yeah, I'm going to ask him like, hey man, you heard about this shit? Yeah. But, but he's a lefty Larry. Uh, so he's probably going to be like, uh, it's for our safety, Chingo. Damn. <laughs> no, nah, I'm actually, kidding. This I, is I the, don't know what he's going to say. Yeah, let's, let's pretend that he did. <laughs> that he would say that. This is actually a minute long. 
coach is out of a job after making it clear that he wasn't going to make his athletes wear masks. I'm Paula Evans. And I'm David Wade. The former coach at Pembroke Academy says even though it cost him his job, he is not backing down from his beliefs. WBZ's Michael Cross spoke with him today. I just think people haven't pushed back, and I decided it was time to push back. Brad Keyes was fired this week as the track and field coach at Pembroke Academy in Pembroke, New Hampshire, and he has been outspoken about it online. I made my choice, he made his. Keyes says he was not going to force his athletes to wear masks while competing. Masks restrict breathing. There's no question about it, especially think about running full speed. The wind is in your face. It's shoving the mask back into your nose and your mouth. He's one of my favorite people to run with. Junior David Tesserman agrees with his former coach and is concerned about running with a mask on this spring. It gets you really tired, especially on, uh, you know, it's going to get up to 80 degrees soon. Um, and it's going to be really hard for us to, to keep doing what we like to do. The New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association's outdoor track guidelines recommend that athletes wear a face covering during competition. So they'll be separated by a lane, which is about six feet. Key says the masks are okay while the team is on the bus, but he does not think they're necessary outdoors. Do you wear a mask yourself? Uh, I wear a mask where I have to. I'll wear a mask when I go into stores or any, any private business that wants me to. I... Based on what I read, honestly, I don't believe they do much good. We reached out to the superintendent's office about Keyes' firing, but they did not get back to us. Reporting from Pembroke, New Hampshire. Bruh. You know what's some good context to this? What? There is a movement of libertarians that have, um, they call New Hampshire like the free state, and I think they're called free staters. Mm. So basically the movement of libertarians is based on the um i guess it has to do with like electoral college or, or some shit like that new hampshire is one of those um it's not a swing state or something like that but basically trump hillary everybody and a mom they they that's one of the first even though it's a tiny state that's one of the first states they go to like they'll skip over certain states but they never skip over new hampshire and the reason i'm bringing it up is because a lot of folks that live in new hampshire are there on some liberty shit. Mm. So the movement is basically, I make a commitment to move my family to New Hampshire in the next four years or whatever, where people commit to do that because they want to hit this tipping point where they can turn, uh, and I'm paraphrasing like a motherfucker, <laughs> but basically they want to affect the political numbers of New Hampshire and they're called free staters. And I bring that up because this he looked like a free state type of motherfucker yeah right and it's a goddamn shame all the residual effects of this pandemic like i get it man this bug it came from somewhere we're all in it together we're doing what we got to do we're trying to keep the economy afloat we had to get orange man bad out but look at how you're affecting the children look how you're affecting i mean the kids gotta see it doesn't make any sense. We're running outside in the wind and the sun. We're not going to give corona to nobody. It just doesn't make any sense. So God bless this coach for uh, taking his stance and saying, nah, man, I'm not going to make my kids run with masks. Yeah, he'll win some kind of legal battle for sure. And we played the video last week of the girl that passed out right at the finish line. She she set a record despite having that mask on and passing out. And her coach... Uh, See, masks are good. Her coach actually spoke her coach spoke out as well, uh, like against it, and saying that you know, despite having passed out and warm ass, she she set a record, um, and just I don't know. The, the the comments were like, imagine if she hadn't worn one, or if anybody that was behind her decided to like pull her mask down, they would have been breathing air and had an advantage, like a like a performance enhancing advantage. Oxygen, yeah, yeah. She basically suffered from what is it, hypo hypoxia or whatever it is, where you just don't have enough oxygen. And it's proven that when you wear those masks, you reduce the amount of oxygen you take in. I wonder if any doctor wrote that down on a paper and said. Uh, that, that hypoxia term. i believe it is i could say it's some, something like that uh or they might risk getting i was gonna say yeah the, these days man they'll accuse you of being a trumpy trump uh, uh insurrectionist uh domestic white white boy terrorist um, on new hampshire though so it's often noted as a moderate in, moderate in politics uh, its status as a permanent it, it is a 
swing state as of still. Voters predominantly selected Republicans for national office uh, in the 19th and 20th centuries until 1992. And then I guess that's why everybody makes a stop because it could go, go any way. Mm. I don't know, man. Keep an eye on the gas pump. Uh, they hacking our fucking pipelines on top of the ones Biden shut down. That's a double fucking whammy. You know, this country runs on petroleum. I mean, all the shit at the grocery store. I don't know too much about what's going on with inflation and hyperinflation and, and the value of the dollar. We're going to have some economy guests on in the near future. Okay, can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. Um, just keep an eye on all that. I'm not saying I know everything. You know, and, and it all depends on what filter you're viewing the world in. But when it comes to your bottom line, your pocket, your taxes, and your ability to provide for your family, maybe it's time to get a little bit more gangster with it. Like, start getting a little bit more involved in politics and at least opening your ears and mind and not just writing us off as Uncle Toms and Bendidos. Because just because the Republican Party, whatever, I'm not, I'm independent. I'm independent. I just, We're I'm just free thinkers. I'm pro freedom. I'm pro America. But if I see this Democrat way of thinking, which is put masks on little kids and let let the men and the girls rest in the girls' locker rooms, and um, just come on now, you got to snap out of it at some point. Just look at examples. Where would you rather live, bro? Like you want to live in a state that has fucking freedom and stuff, like Florida or or California? You tell me. I don't know. I, apparently, a lot of them are like. Yeah. I like being locked down. Well, we're going to have a great guest uh, also next week. Chef, is it Gruel, Gruel? Oh, Chef Gruel going to yeah. be on? Yeah, yeah, Man, I had no idea. Yeah, bro. surprise. So we'll probably shoot for next Tuesday, uh, depending on his schedule, so we can have it as a public episode so that everybody that listens, the tens of thousands of people listen to this podcast, which aren't subscribed to the Patreon yet, now's your chance to do it. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. For sure. Um, can hear his his story and what he's got going on because he really he, I mean, he was at the he's at the forefront of the of the restaurant world. Yeah. You actually might have introduced him to me before I even I yeah. even saw him. Well, I heard him on Michael Berry and I had been following him on Twitter, uh, doing a lot of community outreach. And I believe he's libertarian, but he's super outspoken about what what like for example, um, California's governor specifically has done to small businesses, how the restaurant industry and and restaurant worker service workers have been wiped out. So he's been just chiming in, uh, donating money, like raising money for restaurant restaurateurs that are about to lose their business, um, speaking out about small businesses, um, posting delicious food. Uh, he he, is a, he works with the people from here. Um, he comes to Houston from time to time because Mac Hike, I believe Mac Hike from Mac Chevy? Hike Chevrolet, I believe he's an ex-athlete. Okay. And... He is an he's one of the investors in a chain that uh, Chef Gruel started. It's called Slapfish. Yeah, but also uh, Mac Hike happens to be an investor in um, First Watch. Oh, the, I love First yeah, Watch. The, the little diners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So very excited, man. Very cool. Yeah, can't wait very to talk excited. to him. Also in Chingo Chats, I have my good buddy Charlie Braxton. He was a, a con he used to manage David Banner. He's like a guru of of hip hop and the music business. He was featured on uh, documentaries like on uh, Netflix that have to do with hip hop. And he consulted me when I was doing a crash course trying to learn the music business. So I'm excited about that. Oh, on I can't a, on wait. A Chingo Chats. Yeah, can't wait for you to pick his brain because yeah. it's all going to be questions that are in that industry that you know very well. Yeah, and stuff that he when when we uh, reconnected on the phone, he was breaking down like the streaming game and that whole hustle. Awesome. So there's stuff that I'm out of the loop of, and and I'm just looking forward to reconnecting. Cool. All right. So man. you guys be safe, man. Keep your head on a swivel, and um, all the members of the Tia, the Tamal Intelligence Agency. Whatever news and and perspectives you're getting, please share them with us, and we got new Tia merch coming soon. Y'all be safe. I love watching Peace. <laughs>